In two weeks, you can make history by voting. This is an historic act. Any election that you can go out to vote is a recognition of hard-fought rights, hard-won rights. As we count down to the midterm elections, we're taking a deeper look into why it is so important to vote. And sometimes we need a reminder of the people who fought. Some died for that right. This is why you vote. Today we're sharing the story of the Night of Terror, when a group of women suffragette were beaten and tortured by male guards while fighting for the right to vote. They had been arrested November 14, 1917, more than 100 years ago, while picketing outside the White House. They were thrown into a workhouse prison. Here's what the women say they endured over the next 24 hours. Their words laid out by the Turning Point Suffragette Memorial. One man yelled, the damn suffrager, I will put you through hell. They pulled me down a hall. They twisted my arms above my head, lifted me and slammed my back twice over a bench. They took me alone to the mail area and told me I was alone and the men could do what they pleased with me. Dorothy Day, back over the bench, cried to us for help. We tried, but we could not gra get out of the grasp of the men. They threw Mrs. Lewis, doubled over like a sack of flour, and her head struck the iron bed, which knocked her out. We all thought Mrs. Lewis was dead and wept, but later we were able to revive her. Mrs. Kosu became de desperately ill with chest pains and vomiting. We called for help, but the guards nearby ignored us. When I continued to call my colleagues, guards cuffed my wrists and fastened them above my head to the cell door. Twelve noon, all who had gone through the night of terror refused food in the days that followed, protesting being denied political prisoner status. This is why you vote. With me now, Maya Wiley, professor and senior vice president for social justice at the New School in New York City. Um, these women were also protesting the jailing of Alice Paul, who was a critical figure in the suffragette, uh, suffragist movement. Uh, she was being force fed because she was on a hunger strike. These women suffered physical abuse because they just wanted the right to vote, a right other people had. And they suffered it doing a constitutionally protected thing, Protest. which was exercising their free speech rights. Yeah. Uh, Alice Paul was in jail because they, they created the, the, they manufactured a crime to throw her in jail, which was obstructing traffic. And she spent seven months there. And it was that level of self-sacrifice and leadership of Alice Paul and many, many, many other women that really resulted in women finally, after 100 years of fighting right. for it, getting the right to vote. They finally got the, ro uh, the, the right to vote uh, a few years later. What caused it? Was it protests? Was it just the enlightenment of society that decided that, that women should vote? What, what, what brought it along? It, it was very clearly protest. It was very clearly women organizing and trying to figure out the strategies for demanding their fundamental rights and their rights as citizens. Remember that we're talking about a time in the history of the country where women could not inherit property lawfully. They didn't necessarily have the right to self-initiate divorce. They didn't necessarily have the right to keep their own wages if they had a husband, even though they were earning them. So they were really fundamental rights. They were also often women who were coming out of the abolition movement. Mm -hmm. So they were continuing a struggle for the constitutional recognition that all people deserve a place in this country. And it required the incredible self-sacrifice of like imprisonment. People had eggs thrown at them. Uh, people had objects thrown at them simply for marching peacefully down the street when they were suffragettes. And if it weren't for that, and if it weren't their strategy both at state level to try to get the right to vote as well as at federal level mm -hmm. to demonstrate in front of the White House, finally getting President Wilson to say, I got it. And finally getting public opinion to turn, much like the civil rights movement, by showing the inhumanity of the crackdown on basically free speech and peaceful protest that sort of turned the tides, but it required the protest. So as somebody who studies this and as somebody who is actively engaged in an effort to, to get uh, women to vote, why do you think some people still don't in this country? Is it just that we don't know the history, we don't, it was hard won, we don't think it affects us all that much? Why, why, do, why are there still people who don't vote? Fundamentally is that we as a country are making it very difficult for people to vote, particularly single women. 
uh, women of color. Uh, there are several reasons for that, everything from active voter suppression, which, which, which I know you talk about on your show, Ali, but also the fact that we literally make it hard. So early voting and being able to vote early, being able to vote by mail increases the opportunity, particularly for single women to vote. This is because single women are more likely to work multiple jobs. They're more likely to be paid an hourly wage. Mm -hmm. We don't have a day off for voting the way some countries do, which means you're choosing between buying your groceries and paying your rent and voting. You know, if you give people that kind of choice, even if they want to vote, they have to pay the rent. They have to feed their kids. In every presidential election since 1980, the proportion of eligible women who vote has exceeded men. Uh, it, it, we've seen what happens when women mobilize as a force to vote. We have certainly seen women mobilize politically in a way we haven't even seen before, maybe since 1917. Uh, since 2016, we have saw women mobilize in Alabama in the senatorial election, uh, and we're seeing a record number of women who are running in this election. Yes, and I think that's a great sign for democracy, because we don't, it, our, our democracy works if it represents all of us, yeah. and, all, and all of us is a very diverse group of people, and women also mirror that diversity, but also are much more likely to lead in a collaborative way. They're much more likely to look for bipartisanship, mm -hmm. to focus on real solutions that will actively impact people's lives. So we need that kind of leadership, both whether it's in the State House or in Congress. And I think that mobilization is very much a response to Donald Trump making very clear that he wants to send women's rights in the wrong direction. Maya, thank you for the work you do in engaging people to vote, and thank you for being with us today. Maya Wiley is a professor and the senior vice president for social justice at the New School. Hey, MSNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there and click on any of the videos here to watch the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more MSNBC for free every day with our newsletters. Just visit msnbc.com newsletters to sign up now.